What's up, Care Factor Nation? Rich Malachy here on Season 2, Episode 11. We are in the trenches today with Chef Nick. We are getting it done. We are going to talk about a lot of different things. And I'm going to introduce Nick right now. So, Nick, why don't you introduce yourself to the Care Factor Nation? Chef Nick, um, Corporate Executive Chef for Prasinka Ferry, um, Jersey Shore Chef's President. Jersey Shore Chef's President. So, uh, let's do this. How old are you? 27 years old. 27 years old. This man is making a mark in the industry already. And uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your journey. I know we, we've talked a lot over the last year or so. And um, we talked a lot about food and how food has impacted your life. We talked about, um, you know, uh, weight loss and a lot of different things. I, I really would love for you to share your story, maybe to inspire somebody else. So let's start from the beginning and 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 get into that uh so it takes me back right um i was a very obese kid when i was younger um i was made fun of in school i was called everything from pork oil to elephant i was pushed downstairs i had backpacks thrown at me um jeez and i wanted to drop out of school my grandmother got a heart attack a massive heart attack and she couldn't stand no more she was supposed to be she was supposed to pass away but Ended up surviving. Couldn't couldn't talk anymore. Uh, couldn't stand anymore. Um, so she would sit at the kitchen table, and tell me how to make some of the family recipes, like macaroni and chickpeas. Um, my hmm. mom tried it once, and if she ever watched this, she'd kill me. She destroyed it. <laughs> so she doesn't make it. At mom, all. mom can't cook. Uh, not too good. Not too good. Don't don't <laughs> let us hear this one. <laughs> not too good. Um, so my dad does it now. Um, I work seven days a week, so my dad does it now, but. So I used to, and then I, I applied for Freelboro High School and uh, got into uh, the culinary arts program, which is the Hunter Seat Public Cafe. Um, if you're ever in Freeholds, check it out. Um, and from there, it just took off. I had chefs that take me took me underneath their wing. Um, mm-hmm. There was a chef at Chibo in the city, and I went in on a Friday night, never expected me to show up, and um, I was working the line with him. You, you know, I was... St- quote unquote staging at a young age and I put everything I had into the culinary field and uh, I'm working my way up um, one day at a time yeah nice I mean that's yeah. that's that's a you know one of those things today too right you hear about all the bullying and stuff like that so yeah, for most people will ask um, how did you lose all the weight right yes uh, how did I lose it um, yeah as a chef it's hard going through um my favorite snack is salt and vinegar chips. I eat a whole family size bag. <laughs> I, I did last night, but, um, you know, you got to be mindful of what you put in your mouth. Um, I could sit here and tell you that I get aggravated when someone sues McDonald because it made them fat, right? McDonald's, right. Didn't, McDonald's didn't pick the hamburger up and put it this shit in your mouth. You picked it up and put it in your mouth. So exactly. it's all about choices and changing your lifestyle yes. and knowing the limitations, you know? Now, um, I'm not running around in the kitchen every day, so I do go to the gym, but it was all about cutting diet. Diet is the most important thing. Instead yeah, of eating white rice, eat brown rice. You know, cut back on your portion sizes, eat more meals throughout the day. Um, but it's all within. It's not, it's not, stop blaming somebody else. If you want to get it done, you yeah. get it done. Thank you. That's, that's true. So many people out there are pointing fingers and like you said, they're blaming, they're blaming McDonald's or fast food place and all this stuff. Right. It's, it's, it's your choice every day. You do decide what you're going to eat. So that's, that's true. I mean, it's hard. It's hard here in America because everyone's on the go, but you can still make those right choices. You can, you can. Yeah. And like I said, and even and going to the gym, you go into the gym, you know, that counteracts a lot of stuff that we you know because every now and then you want to indulge. You have to indulge. We're human beings, you know? Yeah. You Why gotta can't live, you gotta live your life? But yeah. A certain point where you have to um, take responsibility for it and stop blaming somebody else. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, yeah. But funny story is um, every time, every, anytime everyone told me I had to lose weight, I always gained more. <laughs> so it's not until it's not until you're ready and you you take action and stop putting the responsibility on somebody else, you lose it. Yeah. 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 Um. So let's talk a little bit more too about your journey to Pasinka Ferry. Yeah. So, how long have you been with them? So, March will be five years. It's about four and a couple of months. Okay. So, yeah. 27. Um, what, what, so, where, from maybe from graduating high school until, until in between Pisenka Ferry and high school, what, 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 what were you up to? So, high school was, yes, I'm young, 2009. I still know the dates. I, gradu- I graduated in 2009 in Frail Borough. Um, I didn't take a summer. Culinary school runs every three weeks. Mm-hmm. I went right into culinary school. 
uh, starting July, so June, July, had no summer. Uh, graduated in about a year and a half from CIA. Uh, did my externship at uh, the Bayhead Yacht Club down, down on the Bon. Um, I think it's the Bonacre Bay, uh, down there in Bayhead. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I went and went to um, Monmouth University. Not it, Monmouth, no, before Monmouth University. I had a, I had a little stint there. Did you, you work there? No, I, I, went, I went. I went to school there back. Th now, this is me. I'm, this is back in 99. <laughs> 99. Well, well, let's back up, back up. Before I went to Monmouth, I graduated college from CIA, and I went to, um, I worked at Kane University. It was called the Cougars then. It was the healthier, okay. healthier option. I worked for a, a contract company there. After that, I left and went to Monmouth. I was there for about a year and a half. Now, I was always the type of guy, like, my one of my good friends would tell you that, I hated the front of the house, never wanted to meet people. I just wanted mm -hmm. to cook, you know? Mm -hmm. And because of of how school went, I didn't want to see kids my own age. It was very hard for me. So Understandable. Monmouth University mm -hmm. is all kids my age, right? I got out of college, but I only went a year and a half for my associate's degree. So I was working while the kids, I knew most of the kids that were coming for the cafeteria. It happened to be my sister was going to school. So she was actually in the cafeteria as well sometimes. So I got the station in the middle of the dining room in front of everybody. And that's where it all started um, hmm. to change. From there, I left and I went to Robert Wood Johnson. Uh, funny story is okay. uh, I quit my job at Monmouth University. I didn't have a job. I was redoing the laminate floors of my house. I went for an interview at the hospital. I saw what my grandmother went through at the hospital. Hated hospitals. Hated hospitals. <laughs> um, I'm with you. Except the job. No show, no call. Yeah. No oh, show, damn. no call. Just put, going to put it out there. Don't burn bridges. Don't do that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, Tony Almeida, <laughs> love him to death. Call me a week later, off me a different position. Uh, and from there, it's where it grew. He is all about um, encouraging, um, inspiring, and growing people. Uh He's the best at marketing. His face is all over. He has a character himself. His yeah. labels have his. Face I think I just him. met him at that at that cookoff. Yeah, totally. Right? I met him. He was the. Yeah, uh, you could MC. just tell he's got energy about yeah. him. He knew how to work the room, and you know when I was I was called Tony Jr. at the hospital. I knew when I left how to work the room, and you know it brought me to where I am today. Um, because, to be honest with you, Joe came looking for me. Joe messaged me on LinkedIn and said I may have an opportunity for you, but hmm. people don't realize on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. Yeah, and I just want to stop yeah, there. On so that's so important because this is the, some of the things that I'm trying to explain to my industry, my service guys that I'm talking at a lot of these conference, these regional meetings. Business, jobs, everything is happening through media. It happens through LinkedIn. Yeah. But good. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's all good. So he put me in the forefront. There's like. 6,000 nurses, we were doing $20,000 a week, you know, we were always in competition. How can we make ourselves better? We could have had the best party, but what can we have done to be better, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? He was always going to stores. He would go to White Winds and take a picture of the, the meatloaf and say, this gravy is like just perfect dripping over the thing. He got excited <laughs> about that, and that's what he wanted to bring back yeah. to his team. Yeah, we did an excellent job, but he wanted to see us grow, and 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 he made that happen, and um, forever grateful for him. He put me in front of six thousand um, doctors and nurses, and I was in the cafeteria, and that's where I really started to build a brand. Uh, you know, um, I realized that it wasn't all like my schooling years. Um, yeah. And that's where it took off. Yeah. I go back there. I was just there yesterday, and everyone's mm -hmm. like, "I love this guy. Give him big hugs." And it, you know, it's just a different feeling now than when I said yeah. I always just wanted to be in the back of the house, never. Never wanted to meet people. Which is understandable. I, you know, you, you can get that because when you're treated like that at an early age, yeah, you know, you kind of want to shy away from that. I, I get it. Yeah, but becoming the president, I have... Uh, but you push about, through. Yeah. About, about I want to say about 75 to 80 members, depending on memberships. Um, they nominated and voted me. This is going to be my sixth year under this term. Um, so, Damn. Yeah. <laughs> it's 21 years old, you know. Uh, it's... And, and you, the guys in the chapter is like, you know how to network. And I, I believe personally, yes, I'm only 27 years old, but you got to look for your future. I could cook my ass off. You put me in any situation, I'll compete. I'll do whatever. I've seen it. And I've he, seen he, it. He also judged. I also <laughs> judged it. It was phenomenal. It was so good. You know, but. Cheese curds. 
Yeah, cheese curds, uh, warm chocolate chip cookies, oh, and a uh, thirty six hour sous vide porchetta rolled with a whole bunch of herbs on a. Oh, it, so it, good. It, it's it my was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I don't know what's surprise. going on here. Here we go. I want to do a segment with you. I want to teach you how to cook. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's what we were talking about yesterday. We were talking about like Matthew uh, Madison and the other the uh, one he brought up. Um, yeah. Um, and we were like, yo, I don't think Rich knows how to cook. Let's teach him. <laughs> I, I, no, I don't. I don't know how to cook. Yeah, batcher man. You know, all those single ladies out there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's right. I'm coming. I'm going to start cooking for Just you. Just don't do chocolate covered strawberries. I can tell you. There's stories out there <laughs> offline. Don't do chalk cover story but it's too serious. <laughs> that's but, cool. I, I love yeah, that idea. Yeah. I think that's should be once you get this kitchen set, we'll do a we'll oh, do a podcast. That would we be come a, out to Pasinka Ferry and we'll do one. We'll do one. We can go yeah. to Pasinka Ferry because this might not happen until next year. Yeah. So oh, I would that would be that would be great. Who knows what that might turn into? That could turn yeah. into something. That's why I said maybe a ne- uh, a network will pick us up. <laughs> yeah. You never know. You never know. You put that teaching in- teaching cooking with Chef Nick yeah, on the maybe. Food Network. Yeah, you, you put it out there. You never know. You get yeah. You got it. You got it. You know. You know. Just we were talking before this started. Um, mm-hmm. We'll go back to networking in a second, but uh, the the media has brought brought the food industry to a, a forefront, but it's also it's kind of like hidden. The ugliness of it, you know, mm. people get out of school or go into school thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to I'm just going to have a, a fabulous life and I'm just going to have someone come out and put stuff on a table and you just can put it together and make millions. It's not like that. Yeah. I work seven days a week because I I choose to. But you're down in, in the trenches. Yes. Um, I get home. My mom's like, you stink. <laughs> go take a shower. You smell like grease. Yeah, you're um, sweating. You're sweating yeah. your ass off all day in those hot kitchens. Those hot kitchens, that food. Uh, you're working long hours. You're on your feet. You're picking up 50 pounds of flour. It's not that easy. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, you could um, make something look easy through TV, but it's not. Once you're in the industry, it's not that easy. Yeah, the magic of TV puts yeah. everything chopped and prepared for you. Yeah. So, oh, we'll just do this, do this. Someone had to do that work. That yeah. didn't, things not, don't just not happen. To not, not to knock Rachel Ray, but I was at her show, and uh, I was on her Thanks for Millions show, and she gave the audience members a whole bunch of gifts. But watching her do that segment, she had like five culinary staffs come out, and everything was placed into place, and she and she put it together. And I mean, Exactly. And she's made a business of it, but I give her a lot of credit, but it's not. that's not the real world in the industry today. That's not the food industry. Mm-mm. You have to hustle and bustle and... It takes some drive and passion. If you don't have that, it's yeah. You got to really love it. Yeah, I just, I'll give you another example. Um, mm-hmm. So I've I've been mentoring a kid. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's actually one of my boss's sons, and he's going to pastry school. And nice. And he was going to Johnson Wells, and you know what? Uh, he got himself one of the one one of his premier jobs in the Hamptons for the summer. It's his first year in in pastry school, which I gave him a lot of credit. You know. Uh, to be into he put he's he's changed his entire mindset and loves it but he's having a little hard time you know and and I not what he thought it was going to be kind of thing it's brutal it's honestly brutal um, yeah the beatings you take you don't have a good service uh, it's and you know i just we uh, me and his father talked to him and and i it's going to take some time like at a point i felt i wasn't respected I had one of the chefs that took me underneath his wings that treated me like shit, you know? And at a certain age, I looked back on my, one of my good friends that we were like, is he treating us different or is it just us? Has, but it's not. It's, it's, he's respected us more that once you start to grow you, and, you, and you develop a name for yourself, the relationship changes, you know? Yeah. And coming out from just schooling or in schooling, it's not that easy. You need to work your way up. You need to develop that respect. And, yeah. And... and it's hard, and, and you're gonna have good nights, and then you're gonna have bad nights, you know. And yeah, it, it all it all comes in a balance. But my my biggest thing is when when you guys come to these parties and it's the food's delicious and everyone's having a good time. Yeah, I have a good time. I don't need to eat. I'm busting my ass behind there. I'm running. I mean, you came to the party. You love I, feeding people. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah. I have a tech service guy that just loves food. I have a a sales guy that loves food, and I have. Um, uh, accountant that doesn't know how to cook, but I could tell him exactly what I, I could send him to a point, and I could produce 
What, what, what did we do? German German night. We did a butter beef. Uh, yeah. Oh man. Potato pancakes. That was my that sales was guy made. They were perfectly round and 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 golden brown. And one year we did polenta in my account. He doesn't know how to cook. He actually seared all the polentas for me. Um, so I <laughs> love teaching. I love inspiring people. Um, you know, they take something out of it and and just watching the customers' uh, reaction. But back to networking. Yeah. Um, it's all about it's all about who you know. I hate to say it, but I, like I said before, I could cook. I know I can cook. I'm not trying to be cocky. Right. But hey, it's all about confident. who you know and the people you meet along the way and the right places and the right timing. Right. I say this. How many times do I say this? It's not. You tell me all day long what you know, and I'll show you who I know. Yeah. People make the world go round. People is the real currency. Yeah. 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 Of course, your skills are gonna are, are gonna be needed. Uh, I I may meet someone that has is an investor. He sees my skills. It's, it's all, it, he's not going to know who I am unless I'm networking out there. And that's, that's right. what I try to tell that's people. Right. Um, it's funny. My girlfriend's an up and coming chef, but, Oh, is uh, she? Yeah. Okay. She works at, um, Bell works in home Dell as, um, she was working, um, the ramen, the sushi hand rolls. I can't, I can't do hand rolls, but those things were Damn. excellent. Yeah. She okay. made me lunch one day. Now she's working at the pizza section in, in the corporate cafeteria, which she's learning around, which is great, but she's shy. Yeah, and she's yeah. gonna kill me for saying this, but I tell break out all the time: yeah. you you go to places, you shake your hand, you grab the business card, you That's shoot them an email, thank you for your time, pleasure meeting you, and you never know who you're gonna touch or who you're gonna meet along the way. Yeah, you don't, you just don't know. You don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, that's why we're doing this. I mean, you know, talking about networking and stuff like that, and and getting out there. I mean, it took me a long time to open my mouth and start doing any of this. Yeah, it's hard. To get, it's hard to get in front of the camera. I was on the news. Two years ago, one of my one of my uh, good friends, he's uh, he was the VP of Muscle Maker, and they needed a chef to go on the news to do a segment. I dropped the squeeze bottle right in the pan. It's live TV. It's the most stressful thing, and I can't watch the video because <laughs> I'm embarrassed. But yeah, man, you never know where you're gonna be. And I mean, we we didn't meet, right? I mean, yeah, it would have taken longer, but I helped you start the um, the ball rolling with the uh, absolutely. I mean, I see it all the time on Instagram now that you're now uh, the care factor for Pico, Blodgett, Marcel. Yeah. And all those brands, yeah, got yeah. the ball rolling and then moved, and look where we are this now. This is this is yeah. I mean, this is this is relationships. This is the networking part, because it wasn't what I knew. It was who I knew, and it was it was it was who you know you become friends with. And yeah, you, but it you also know. your reputation. Uh, by doing this, I don't call some other service company. I work on the weekends. I called them Saturday morning. I said I need a service company. I need I need a service team out here now. I need my fry up and running. Done. And you know. Yeah, it's who you know, but it's also your your reputation and, and yeah. your skill set behind you that's going to push you yes. further along. Yes. So you need both of them combined. It's you just do. not one or the other. You do. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, you still need the skills and the expertise yeah. of what you're doing. And that, that comes with surrounding yourself with good people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's, that's yeah, this, that, that, this was a great, great little, uh, <laughs> great little segment. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, we got off a little topic. No, this, was, back, this is. But we should do, we should do that cooking with, uh, cooking with Chef Nick. We, we, we're, no, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it. Just tell me what's on the menu so I'm prepared. Yeah. <laughs> or no, don't tell me. Actually, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Why oh, you freak out? You don't like you don't like cooking at all? No, I, I don't mind. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind cooking. I actually, you know what it is? I, I the only thing I do make really is meat meatballs. I, I I have a little recipe and I make meatballs. I throw them in the slow cooker every holiday. People love them. I, just, I it's just simple. I do uh, sauce or. Yeah, it's just I do I do just a simple a simple sauce and um. It's just it's half half uh, half pork, half ground beef, different spices, and uh, yeah. I, I put I, I I don't know if this is good or bad or anything. My secret ingredient is butter. I, I put I clarify melted butter or whatever, and I pour it, I pour some in. I want to try some of these meatballs now. They're pretty they're they're pretty good. I always get I always get a response. You bringing your meatballs? So yeah, there you go. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's I all also, personal preference when it comes to cooking. You know, I may like something, I may think it's the best thing, but. Someone else may think it's too salty. You know, it's finding that balance, and mm -hmm. that's the hard part. Yeah. You know what? Actually, let's let's talk about we're talking about meat and all this stuff and sustainability and all these different things that are out there today. What do you what do you where where are your your personal preferences on on uh, vegans and vegetarians and meat and what are your thoughts on any of that stuff? Because you're in the food world <laughs> I can from serve it. just from everything from like serving people to understanding people's different things and what do you, what are you seeing out there in the in the chef kitchen I can world. Never be it. I save all my pork fat. I fry everything in pork fat. But, <laughs> uh, I do a lot of I'm not mad at you. Yeah, I do a lot of pig roast. Um, that pork cheddar is 36 hours. Can you only imagine? It's, it's the pork belly. So it's, well, yeah. traditional, 
is the loin and the belly rolled up, but I just do the the belly, right? And you're surrendering out that fat for 36 hours. So what are you cooking that? What do you, how do you cook that? What, so it's cryovac, it's cryovac in a bag, and then and you throw it into a water bath at a precise temperature for 36 hours. Okay. Um, but I took all that juice and I poured it into a strainer and uh, I solidified it in the fridge and I just fry my steaks in it and stuff. It's delicious. Mm. I can never be it. Um, I get it. You know, I respect it. Uh, some people do it for health reasons. Some people do it um, for the uh, culture or. Or the animals and, you know, I respect all sides. I can't do it. Yeah. No, I, I respect everybody. But everybody, when it, no, personal preference, whatever you want. You know, I think, you're not affecting I think me. I'm going to eat meat. Yeah. But I think the farm to table thing is, what do you call it? Do you call it from seat to table? Do you call it from, like, can to table? Because, I mean, you're still, <laughs> one part of that dish is from, from farm to table. Not everything, you know. Um, True. I think it's just a play on words or a gimmick, and it's a yeah. fad that yeah, everyone's going to because it seems healthier, but it's really not. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I, I know there's some things that we kind of touched on. Um, I mean, I, I just had some of these these questions here. You know, we're talking about a common myth, which we kind of touched on already. Yeah. Um, a common myth of the food service industry and how you can debunk it. We're talking about being glamorous, so we kind of talked about that already. Um, but what what advice would you give to someone wanting to enter this field? Do your homework. You have to have drive. You have to have passion, you know. Um, it's going to take a lot out of you. Keep your head down. Um, yes, chef. And, you know, gather as much information as you want, you know. Um, yeah, you may not think it's the right way, but that's how the, your superiors want it. Um, mm -hmm. Gather that. The next place may tell you some other way. You gather that. And when you're out on your own doing your own thing, you make it your way, right? Right. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Um, the farm to table thing that you're talking about. What do you think is like a healthy option for when you are eating? You just said everything's healthy. So like, what do you? How do you sort through all those different options? You That's just, a good question. So instead of pork belly, you may want to eat a, a a boneless pork chop or something that not boneless, but like um, a loin that has less fat. Right. It, I'm not eating um, chicken franchise. You know, I'm taking that chicken cutlet and grilling it. One of my favorite items is actually uh, you just take the chicken and um, dip it in olive oil and mm -hmm. um, holy breadcrumbs and just grill it. It's one of my favorite hmm. items. But okay. um, again, how many low? I mean, if you're going local, it's a different story, right? And yeah, it's farm to table, but you're produ you're you're helping the um, it's sustainability because you're helping the community. Mm -hmm. But yeah, farm to table, but. Is it really farm to table? I mean, you go to the farm picking that fresh every day. You still, where is it all coming from? Right. Because how many farms you, is there a restaurant around here? I couldn't tell you. Yeah. So yeah. you still truck it in. Yeah, it's farm to table, but w unless it's local, where is it coming from? Right. Uh, like that's, that's, that's yeah. your restaurant is on a farm. Yeah. And fish doesn't count as farm to table, but I just, <laughs> <laughs> right. I just, I, it's just, it's a play on words there that took off and. I don't follow it, but I respect the people that do. You yeah. Know? Cool. Hey, you just fresh local ingredients? Yeah. Okay. I'm all about it, but. Right. Jersey, some stuff. Jersey, yeah. Jersey's got some great tomatoes and corn. Yeah, and, and blueberries. I'm, I'll be going blueberry picking uh, July 4th. Uh-oh. All right. Yeah. You make it, what are you making? Blueberry pie? I make blueberry pie. That'll be on our cooking. Yeah, blueberry pie. Actually, I do some kind of like... Um, I can't remember the name, but it's not it's not a pie shape. It's actually folded over. It's like a little tart. Okay. Um, incredible, yeah. One of my favorite, one of the easiest things to make. It's probably like four ingredients, but we'll we'll do that on a cooking segment. Um, yeah, and just, just so continue on following up on some of this stuff. So for, for people out there in the industry or want to get in the industry, are there any resources that have really helped you on your journey? Yeah. Um, network. Yeah. Uh, organizations. Um, ACF, I wouldn't be where I am today without it, you know. Um, okay, yeah, I see. I see ACF out there on 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 uh, social media getting stronger and bigger. Yeah. Um, my only concern is, yeah, I'm 27, but when I go to these regional conferences and nationals, I don't see the younger generation. That's a problem. It's a big problem. That's a problem because I'm in the I'm in the same boat in the service side. You don't see, you know, many. Yeah. Many 20, 25 again, to 30. The problem is to, is is labor. The workforce is. Is it millennials or people below me that you know, want to make six figures doing nothing? You don't want to be on your cell phone all every day. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's that. hard. It's hard. It's hard work. It's not that easy. Um, but it's all about networking. I mean, we're one of the greatest states because I, almost I want to say almost more than half of the high schools in New Jersey have culinary programs. Okay. Um, I could tell you, Middlesex County has. I want to say about like ten shops a school. You know, they have welding. They have um, culinary. They have. Um, whatever the beauty school is mm-hmm. they have all cosmetology these, yeah, cosmetology yeah. they have all this stuff uh it's out there excuse usa it's a trade you know we went from college 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 now we're starting to go back towards trade you know we were trade yeah. in college now we're starting to head back to her because everyone got pushed to college now we're for now generations we're missing, yeah now we're missing that trade aspect that needs yeah make, it's yeah, yeah and I, I make this mention all the time i probably mentioned it on the last one but you know mike rowe if you know, you know, Mike yeah, Dirty Jobs. Scholarship, yeah. Yeah. So he he he's out there promoting the trades, and he he always says, you know, the people of the trades are the ones to do the jobs to make civilized lives possible. Yeah. You know, we get to go out and enjoy our our restaurants and and different things because of food service technicians fixing stuff, because of chefs preparing. I mean, what, what would you do without a plumber if the if the pipes were plumb? Exactly. Right. I mean. So God forbid a kid didn't have electricity to charge your phone, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean you don't you don't you don't realize how important these people are until you need yeah, them. Yeah. Until you need them, and then you start scrambling. Oh, who do I call? Who do I call? Wait for the next ten, fifteen years to go roll around, and all of our guys and chefs, like you said, you don't see the younger generation there. Someone that's fifty today in fifteen years is probably going to say, "I'm done. I'm going to go spend time with my family," and then what? There's going to be such a lack of chefs and food service individuals and technicians and plumbers and electricians and HVAC guys that those prices are going to start going from here to here. Yeah. You know, that's going to be too expensive. It's going to be super expensive to get those people through the door. So talking about it and promoting these trades from all aspects, carpenters, general contracting, all these things, it's all going to be super necessary. So you have to have a love for it. You know, I I love food. I love. Well, you know something I will tell you, I didn't have a love for this. I had zero love for this. I will tell you right now. I sat. I used to go hide in my in the part of the warehouse upstairs. I used to go hide down aisles, and hope my dad didn't <laughs> didn't come looking for me. Rich, what are you doing back there? Oh, I'm just counting some inventory. Like I didn't want to be here. I was I was I was listen. I was 15, 16, 17. I didn't want to be here. I didn't really start to enjoy and love this until I was probably in my mid twenties, and I kind of learned it, not but wanting see, to learn but it. See where you're going now. It's yeah. So I didn't even. So I, I would say, to someone, if you don't know what you want to do, why not go try it? Jump in, jump in, jump into culinary school. See, see, see if it's a fit for you. I think you're, you'll know. You know, oh, you'll, you'll know. You'll know. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? You'll know because you'll see you'll see the grueling hours and the, like you said, and and the, and the how hard it has to be, and you have to have a thick skin, and you have to be ready to eat eat shit yeah, for a little you bit. Have to, you have to be in a hundred hundred degree kitchen in the summer. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm lucky that uh, the place I work on the weekends is on a beach, but I don't get to see the beach. I work in. The I beach. gotta get down there. I think. I, yeah. I think I was there once, but I wasn't there to like enjoy myself. It's, it's, let's let's give let's plug. What's uh, Ocean? So it's Ocean Beach Club. It's a, it's a private club. So. Oh, it's a private club. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I work in the basement. Uh, I look at the weeds out the window, and uh, I love it. You know, it's, it's even though it's on the beach, it's for the members to enjoy. And yeah, I love what I do. Nice. Yeah. So. Uh, now you're up at Cinco Ferry, so what's what's the what's your role there? Let's tell everybody what your role is there. So I'm the corporate executive chef there. I okay. I do all the demos. I do all the testing. Um, beyond my role there, I work with a lot of factories to do new stuff. Um, you did a segment on mushrooms. Yeah. Um, yep. I was told I couldn't do it. Yeah, and, uh, and that was, that was with the Carter Hoffman's. Yeah, and I and I'll show you later the uh, the last tray I got. It was incredible. The yield of mushrooms that we got. Um, I do a lot of work for Marcel. Um, so for those who are listening, Marcel, obviously they are major lead, leading the way in pizza ovens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, one of my favorite ovens. Yeah. yeah. Anything, anything specific we should let the maybe an end user listening know about them or uh, the even bake. It's all about the even bake. I mean, right. You got the ceramic ceramic di- uh, plates going up. So it depends on the the, uh, the, the, the actual yeah the actual the oven. S- that's the SDs. No, and the, M- the the MBs have the MB. brick. It's built around the brick. The SDs has the option for the brick. Okay. It is a smaller brick on top, but they do. Uh, but I also have Baker's Pride. You know. Um, yes. And it's and it's it's hard because, you know, um, it sells. So it's a game, but 
you're going to have people that love Baker's Pride and want Baker's Pride, and you're going to have Marcel, and you're going to have people that want Marcel. Mm -hmm. And before, we used to try to switch people over, and now it's you're going to put people into what they want, or you're going to show them the difference and let them decide. Right. Make, yeah, make their the, best yeah. educated decision after they have the facts. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's the beauty of having both. You know? Yeah, because depending on the application and what you're looking to do, I know you mentioned sometimes with people who are doing a lot of toppings, you know, you're going to have the brick on top, the, the MBs, yeah. Yeah, because so there's a lot of pies out, but um, Baker's Pride now has an oven like that. But, you know, it's all it's all preference, and it's, and it's beneficial for me as the corporate chef is I have options. You know, someone may look online, and, and the online industry is killing most people. You yeah, know? yeah, it's changed you know? the game. It's changed yeah. the game for all of us. It's, it's, it is. It's, it's, we have to reinvent the business because of the online thing, and, and I give them a lot of props. They started, they're killing the game, but everyone else has to. But the one thing you talk about was networking, and I'll tell yeah. you what, there's no substitute. There's nothing online that connects you with anybody. There's no cost it's a picture. Service. It's a picture, it's a website, and that's it. Okay, you're going to pay $1,000 less or $1,500 less or $500 less, whatever it might be. But they're not going to have you. They're not going to. They're not going to have me. They're not going to have yeah. the people in their backyard locally that's going to be there for them when shit hits the fan. Yeah. No, I I agree. And and you know they go online, they see something, and I'll give you a perfect example. There's a sheeter out there that's vertical. I'm going to save space. It's cheap. You know, people look at price point. Mm -hmm. Well, they were about to buy it, and they finally called me and said, "What about this thing?" And I'm like, "Well, what's your dough hydration ratio?" Well, well and they were like, "Well, it's this," and I'm like, "Well, that's not going to work." Mm -hmm. You know, just because it cheaps in the same space doesn't mean it's the right piece. And that's not the Internet's not telling you that. Nope. You know, I had a horrible um, not even like four months ago. No, not even. It was two months ago. I uh, bought some stuff online um, and I had a horrible experience with one of them. And uh, just I couldn't wait to tell everybody because, <laughs> it, yeah, it it, it it proved to what I was te preaching. You know, the customer service was not I was not a fan of the customer service. Um, it, it was just a horrible experience for me. Yeah. Um, they they tried to reach out after I told them who I was, and I was like, mm -hmm. it's too late, you know. It, it put a, uh, a taste in my mouth that I don't want to deal with you. I'd rather go to a local dealer and buy the stuff locally. Yeah, yes. may spend some more money, but support that guy. And and there's a face, there's a human interaction that you can't take away. Yeah, the millennials yep. are on their cell phone and. The guy behind the camera's on his cell phone right now. Yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you know what I mean. The, yeah. The, the 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 younger generation is is on their cell phone. It's at their forefront. It's on their fingertips. The shows are dying because they have it right and very available. Right. But there's something about the human element. Yeah. That that is. Yeah. There's no substitution. Yeah. There isn't. There's nothing for it. No, without a doubt. I mean, that's just it's all. That's we talk about that here all the time. It's the game changer. Yeah. It's the ultimate game changer. From having a new customer that calls you and it's like, oh man, this you know this might be a customer we want to we work with. You know they have you know six locations. Just having someone on the phone or an email, I'm like, we got to go meet them. Yeah. Because once they meet Geraldine and Janine and me, and it changes the game. It changes it. They know you're there for them. Yeah. Now it's like it become we we become real. We don't just become a website that they clicked on and said, oh, they service this stuff. Now they see the people, you know, and then I could direct them to YouTube and say, hey, listen, go check out our videos, learn more about us. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, what pisses me off the most. It drives me up a wall. Uh oh, is calling somebody and <laughs> voice uh, calling somebody and get, have, having to go to voicemail, emailing them, or um, or those uh, or automatic prompts. I just want to talk to somebody. Yeah, get the shit done with, get it over with, and move on to the next thing. Waiting for a response, waiting for this person to call you back, or having to go through that. I just hit zero and try to get to the operator as quick as possible. Yeah. I actually, I, maybe we have to think about that. We have a phone system upstairs where you call up and it says one for service. Two well, we for have parts. it too. I mean, that, but you call certain places and the entire thing is, is automated and it's just like, there's no, human oh yeah. It. Yeah. That's, that's it's brutal. Horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. No. That, that I understand it's because you're getting the right person, but especially in our business, yeah. everything is now. I mean, I know the whole world is now, but is our industry? Ne I mean, our industry is like yesterday. Like people call up, they're like, "Hey, is he on his way?" I'm like, "You placed the call eight minutes ago." <laughs> yeah, but people but, don't realize that. And what I, you you started to do a lot of traveling now, and um, I was doing a lot of traveling, mm -hmm. and I got checked myself at some of these shows because I live in New York, New Jersey. We're abrupt. We're abrasive, 
and we want everything <laughs> done yesterday, right? It's true. And I'm talking to this guy, and the guy's like from the Midwest, and he's like, yeah, yo, yo, man, it's okay, no problem. Next week, I'm like, next week, <laughs> New York would be like screaming at my door, and I'm like, yeah, yo, it's a, it's, it's a different world out there, and you probably see it it's now so that true. you travel a lot more, but it's so true. The whole the rest of the world moves a little bit slower, yeah, and, and things are kind of more okay. But I'm the, I'm the same way. Like I was talking to my summer my summer job boss, and I was like, you never see me sit down and eat a sandwich. You see me, I have my sandwich in my hand running around, still doing stuff. <laughs> and, and you have the younger generation, they're taking the hour breaks. Yeah, and even when I see you at the shows and you're cooking, yeah. you just, just be like, I'm done. <laughs> I'll do the next. And that's, a, and that's enough. Half the time, I don't, even, I don't even eat at the pizza shows. Like, Stephanie will have um, a jar of peanuts, uh, cashews. I only eat cashews. Yep. Uh, a jar of <laughs> M&M's and some kind of protein bar. And that's, that's my meals for the, the four days cooking at the show because I personally don't like pizza. I know a lot about pizza. I don't like it at all. Really? Yeah, it's something about sauce and cheese, and it brings me back to being Italian. Oh, Here man. Here in America, we destroy Italian food. Okay. Destroy it. Okay, so that leads me into this. Yeah. We talked about Italy. Yes. Italy. I want to talk about this because this is interesting. So Italy, you mentioned you just got citizenship? Yeah, I got my dual citizenship. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It was actually an interesting process. Learning. So I had to go back to my... Um, Great grandparents on my father's side, so it goes through his mother to her parents, and it was kind of interesting. They came here, and she was born, and they were still an Italian citizen, which meant in turn she was an Italian citizen at birth. But even though they naturalized after, I was able to get it. Um, I've been there twice, probably about uh, in total about a month. I traveled anywhere from Coliano in the Veneto region in Venice, all the way down to Sicily and back up. It's Absolutely wow. incredible. I absolutely love it. it one day, I wish the whole, I have a house there and I can move there. Well, I mean, now you got dual citizenship, so yeah. that's possible. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Um, most people don't realize when you travel, you travel outside the world, there's an expiration date that your passport has to be valid for. Um, my brother was going on his honeymoon, and I was like, did mm -hmm. you check your passport? It needs to be valid from six days, six months after your return date, because if you stay, you have six months, and they want to get you out of there. Yeah, and he had to go and get his passport a passport updated. But okay, um, huh. I didn't know. Yeah, you know, it was like uh, certain countries are like eight, seven, six, Italy six months. But uh, I love it, and so now I could actually stay. I could actually own property out there. That'd yeah. be pretty good. Yeah, one day. One day. Why hopefully. not? Yeah, maybe have right. open up something, right? My fav my favorite spot is Sorrento. You go Sorrento. Uh, okay, it's the atmosphere, the food. It's incredible. But there's actually a tour that I did two years, uh, probably about three years ago now. They take you to the Brigitto factory. You learn all about every kind of from the whole pig. They break it down and they, and they, and they cure it. Uh, the Parmesan factory, mm -hmm. and the balsamic factory. Okay, it's totally different. And then they take you to a five course meal after. They pick you up from your hotel and drop you off at your hotel for like it's about uh, like 130 bucks. Oh wow! It is Not the bad. best tour I have ever been on. All right, so then well, yeah. I, I've never been to Italy, so I got to make we sure. Yeah, I go one day. I'm going. I'll definitely be going. I've been to Ireland, but I've never been to Italy. Yeah, that's kind of my heritage on my, on my one side. My other, my other side is is also uh, Sicilian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my girlfriend's family is from Casa de Mara, and it's beautiful down there. But other parts of Sicily, I've never spent my money and go back. But yeah. mainland Italy, 100. percent I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. So, um, just some some uh. Some fun stuff, real quick. Um, the, and and, and uh, this is just off the top of your head. I don't even know this. I just, I kind of I pulled these off of a site that I just want to see. So, what's your favorite word? <laughs> <laughs> Can it be a curse? No. Yeah. Um, La Fanapoli. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fangu. There you go. That's a nice way to say it. I, I don't know. I don't know what favorite word. Is. Abracadabra. <laughs> I don't know. All right, we'll go back. Oh, no. Um, we'll skip that. What? What? Uh, this is a question that I, again I pulled off. What are you not very good at? Testing. I hate tests. Math, English, <laughs> and writing. Don't give me no essays. Don't give me no functions. Don't give me no fractions or algebra. I won't do it. Guess no. what? I'm the same way. It's not. It's. I'm not, I am horrible. Not a fan. You give I me can't. hands on. I'll, I'll do anything hands on. But don't give me no any tests. I agree. I, I, it freaks I'm the me worst. Out. It freaks me out. I won't tell you what I got on my SATs. I didn't it's not take good. them. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> take them. There's a reason why I didn't take them. You know, I'm lucky because um, when, when I went to college, I had to take a math and writing test to graduate. I, I 
trust me. I yeah. felt that a couple of times. Oh, listen, <laughs> it's I, not it's not fun. To school stress. was school was rough, man. Yeah, it's I, not. I, it wasn't good for me either. Yeah. I got I got most likely to fall asleep at graduation in high school. My parents were so proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, eighth grade? Hey, listen, 1995, class of 95, I won best looking. Right. Come on. There it was all go. downhill from there. I don't know what happened. Yeah, school. school that was the highlight of my life. Like right. I, I had a 50 song. High school, yeah. you were the man, homie. You know. Um, what happened to you? It's, it's interesting because I rebuilt the um, deck stairs uh, in my house. I rebuilt the kitchen. My dad, we put a whole new sub panel in. Uh, we did all the, um, the soffits. We took those out. We moved the plumbing around. I could do all stuff. I did sheetrock for the first time. I'm not afraid to get anything in dirty. You give me math equations. You yeah. give me writing. Yeah, it's brutal. Done. It's tough. I leave that on the table. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Next one is uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? <laughs> Become rich. <laughs> no. There you go. Yeah. They nah. Superpower. I don't know. I. I I have everything I want. I mean, at book but, smart, you know, <laughs> that, that math and English. I saw, I saw the other day this, there was this question, actually. I, someone said uh, if you could pick to, um, for a superpower, whether you could fly or speak every language on the planet, I have but, no, what would you choose? I have no desire to speak every language on the planet because most countries you go to, a lot of them speak English anyway. It's true. You know what the thing is? You know what the trick is? Like, I tell you, I got into a cab and the guy's like, ah, uh, whatever he said, I don't speak any English. And I said, oh, really? And I started talking to him, and all of a sudden he starts talking to me, and I'm like, I thought you don't speak English, <laughs> you know? It, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's universal. English is universal. So. It is, and I just learned the statistic that China, I think Nick, by, by the end of 2020 or 2021, it'll, it will be the largest English-speaking country on the planet. Yeah, and, and China, go figure, right? Yeah. But, yeah, I'd, I'd rather fly, you know? I'm with you. I fly as it is. My girlfriend tells me I, I would love to be able to fly. Gotta tell me to take my roller skates off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, definitely. And then this one, this one, this one um, actually resonates with with you and us. So, if you were a type of food, what type of food would you be? Not pizza. Not pizza. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. What type of food would I be? That's an interesting question. I don't, I, I don't even know what I would answer that. Um, if I was a food, I would, I would probably I would probably be a quarter pounder. For McDonald's, I don't know. For the fresh beef, <laughs> here comes here comes Rich. Fresh beef, quarter pounder. <laughs> what kind of food, man? These are the harder questions than before. Uh, these are, yeah, these are interesting and strange. And mush- mushrooms, mushrooms, nah. <laughs> spicy. I'm onions. We'll, we'll right want to do a pass. Spices. We'll do a pass. We'll pass on that. Uh, last last thing. Uh, favorite celebrity chef you have? Any kind of favorite celebrity chefs you look up to or? Maybe not on a national level, maybe on a regional level or New York or celebrity chefs I look up to. I mean I would like to be them one day, but um no not really. I mean I know Daniel Balud is a big guy, right? Big in well the, Dan- the, yeah, he, uh, he, Keller, well yeah, so he's Thomas Keller. Keller Thomas Keller, Keller right? Yeah, they're celebrity chefs in their own way, you know. Right. They're not um, like food you networks. Know, I would love to be like or... a I hate to say it, but someone like an Anthony Bourdain. I don't look up to him. And don't get me started on what happened. Hey, listen. Um, yeah, I know I, it's a disease out there, but um, I, I I love I loved that guy. I, lo- I watched everything yeah. he did, and I'm, I love, I'm not I'm, even I'm not a chef. I just loved. I just, he was just he was enjoyable to yeah. watch his travels. I mean, travel, and that's that, and that's that's I love that part. Um, I went to Bermuda. I went with a local guy. I didn't want to go eat in tourist spots. I went to Mama's Kitchen. It was the best fish sandwich I ever had, or Art Mel's. I went to Italy and yeah. I got some chefs over there. I'm like, where's the best gelato? Where's the best? It took me to a one star Michelin restaurant in someone's house in Bologna. It was the best meal I've ever That's had. That's the best way to travel right, right there. That's the, you find the local culture, you get in with the local people, mm-hmm. and it's some of the best food environment that you'll ever have. And that's what, and that's. Not that I look up to him, but that's what I would want to be one day. That yeah, I don't, that, that it was an incredible journey. Um, it was an incredible show, and he took you in depth into a culture. And that's, he did, and that's what I love. Yeah, um, he immersed you right into it. I mean, yeah. you, you you almost wanted. I, I I could see him sitting there like at three o'clock in the morning, drinking something, whatever he was, some kind of alcohol, or sipping something. It's like you wanted to be there. Yeah, no, you wanted to be sitting next yeah. to you, like just be part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just the way he did his shows was incredible. Um, I did meet. I did get to meet him back in the day. One of the nicest guys. Um, talked all about his daughter. Um, but if I could 
be like him one day and doing that travel and bringing people and culture together. My biggest thing is food brings people together. You know, it's yeah. everything relates back to food and around that, that side true. of the table, you know, um, I think my Instagram tagline on there is food is my life. Right. You know, and Make people, that up. people don't realize, uh, well, it's chef Mercagliano, but, uh, we'll link, we'll link, we'll link, we'll link. Yep. Um, it just, everything's come back to food, you know, it and, does. True. Uh, food is the, connect, ult- is the ultimate. Over food. And, you know, having that back in the day when I was making fun of for my weight and stuff, I hid behind food, you know. I Yeah, I ate a lot. But but once I turned that around, I'm still hiding behind food. I'm the most comfortable cooking, showing those skills than anything mm-hmm. else, you know. Uh, it's, yeah. I just, I just, there's a, like a glow. I don't know what to even call it. Just the passion inside me comes out when I'm, when I'm, behind food and and feeding somebody yeah so the final thought i think is if you find your love and your passion for something and you put the work and the time and the effort in one day you might be 27 years old 28 years old living 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 that that dream inside you yeah you never know where life's gonna take you that's right you know i'm 27 years old i've seen i've done a lot and it's just getting started. Just getting started. But you got to keep working just hard. Just getting started. Keep, keep working, working hard. hard. You so have to have that work ethic. I was watching that, um, that what was it, Gold Collar Tips? <laughs> yeah. What was it? That's right. The ten gold, commandments. There you go. The, ten, the, commandments. Ten, the ten Gold Collar Commandments. Yep. You can't teach worth ethic. Has to come within. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Has Absolutely. to come within. Absolutely. So we're, we're going to we're gonna end this one here, I think. Um, anything you want to plug going on? Huh? Anything coming up? We're good to go. Good to go. All right. So Pasinka Ferry, we'll go check them out. We'll we'll go connect with Nick on Instagram. We'll tag him up and um that's it. The Care Factor season two, episode eleven, taking it down. Nick, I appreciate you being here, man. No problem. Thanks for that. Thanks, brother. We out. <laughs>